So we've seen now that neuroeconomics offers at least three models um, that explain intertemporal choice and that give us an insight into the neural correlates of intertemporal choice. We've seen a dual systems uh, approach or account with beta regions that encode immediate rewards and delta regions that are sort of generally involved in decisions that involve intertemporal um, outcomes. We've seen a single system uh, account that basically first used the behavioral data to compute a subjective value and then find correlates um, within the brain of this subjective value. So this is adjustments to basically each subject's um, intertemporal preferences and then on each trial you have a different subjective value based on the choice options you offer the subject. And here we see neural correlates between subjective value and the bold response in, in VMPFC, posterior cingulate, and ventral striatum. So basically uh, the valuation system. And finally, we have a self-control account, um, which focused primarily on the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and its role in possibly inhibiting the propensity to go for immediate rewards. One question that is commonly asked in both economics and neuroeconomics is, is intertemporal choice simply a form of decision-making under uncertainty? And that's a reasonable question because you can easily imagine, um, for instance, all the types of events that could happen between now and, let's say, a year from now when you actually get to enjoy your outcome, when you receive your outcome, including uh, injury, in the worst case, even death. So then obviously you cannot enjoy this, this outcome that you've been waiting for anymore. But also many other things like the world changes, the value of the outcome decreases, and maybe even the, your valuation of this outcome changes between now and then. So there is obviously some uncert uncertainty involved in the value, concerning the value of the, of the outcome, and uh, even if you're getting it at all. And the longer this time period is, the more uncertainty is involved, obviously. So it's a fair question. Um, and this is a question that has been studied in this experiment by uh, Peters and Büchel. And what they do is quite nice. They have this, this uh, task that, that we know well up, uh, by now. So this delay discounting task, right? Where a, a subject in the scanner is offered either the immediate option, which is 20 euros in this case, um, or a larger later option, which is uh, in this case 26 euros in 30 days, but obviously they varied these values here, right? And uh, the same thing happened in the probability discounting um, task. So they had a similarly framed task to the delay discounting task, but here the uh, amounts were discounted by the probability that was offered on each trial. And again, they varied these, uh, these values so that they can have, uh, that they can fit the behavior to uh, hyperbolic discounting function. It turns out that both, both of these, delay discounting and probability discounting, uh, the behavior nicely fits these types of hyperbolic uh, discounting functions that we've seen already for delay discounting. <clears throat> so they're comparable behaviorally, but uh, how does it look like in the brain? How does it play out there? So what they first did is they computed subjective value using these hyperbolic discounting function. Um, and then they looked for the neural correlates in those two tasks. So we have the delay discounting task and we have the probability discounting task. And you can see the neural correlates and you can already see some overlap in the ventral striatum here. But you can also see that there's some different regions that are involved. To probe for the differences, then they looked for um, obviously subjective value correlations between the value for each participant on each trial and um, and the bold signal. But how does this differ in the delay discounting task relative to the probability discounting task? And you can see that there is lateral parietal cortex involved in the delay discounting task and this medial prefrontal region. Um, but in the subjective value correlations during the probability discounting task, some other regions are involved. And they highlight, for instance, the interparietal sulcus here. Um, so this means that each of these tasks has specific networks that are involved, but are there also networks that overlap? And uh, yes, there are. So doing a conjunction analysis between DD and PD, so these two tasks, you see that um, ventral striatum and orbitofrontal cortex activates similarly in both of these tasks, right? So in the delay discounting task and the probability discounting task, 
we see this overlap. A conjunction analysis, just to give an update, is basically looking at which voxels survive in both types of tasks. So you, you do a logical end conjunction, basically, saying that I only want to see those voxels that are active in one task and as well in the other task. So that's basically what, what they're doing in this, in this map here. And you can see there is some overlap in uh, also regions of the valuation system, such as the ventral striatum. Now let's go back a little bit and uh, compare this map, especially the conjunction map, to uh, what's been found in the Cable and Glimpshaw study that showed also these subjective value correlates in the uh, sort, of, sort of a similar delay discounting task. And you can see here that the striatum is obviously involved and also this over the frontal region or the ventral medial prefrontal cortex here. So this gives us some indication about what might be going on here, namely that we have some form of common currency, right? So at least when we're comparing uh, the delay discounting task and the probability discounting task, there are some regions that, that seem to translate this, um, well, the type of decision that participants are making into some common currency. At, at the very least, similar regions are involved in, in different types of, of decisions, right? Or the same region in this case. This is obviously suggestive of uh, a common currency within the brain. Now, there's some evidence for this. So the idea basically here is that we have different types of decisions to make. We have to make decisions about um, different types of uh, outcomes. So those could be apples versus oranges. Uh, and it's hard to compare those outcomes. Or let's think about um, another example, for instance, whether to go on holiday at the beach versus to go on holiday in the mountains with two different activities that are offered there. How can we compare the value of one versus the other? Um, or the value of buying a car or upgrading your house versus going on holiday. So, so those are kinds of things that, that we have to do on a, on a daily basis uh, in, in a complex world. And ideally, we have one brain system that is able to convert the value of each of these different choice options, even if, if they're very different, if they're cars versus holidays or kids now versus career first, even if there's those kinds of different choices, there has to be some level of abstraction that allows us to make and compare the value of these different choice options. And the system that seems to be involved in this is, the, um, is this valuation system that's, that's shown here. So we have regions in, uh, that are involved in this system, including the VMPFC, including the ventral striatum, but also the insula, um, that seems to be consistently involved in choices in different domains, and those include uh, simple choice, risky choice, so the kinds of food choices we've talked about, uh, intertemporal choice, but also, as we'll see, social choice and, and other types of decisions. When it comes to evaluating these different choice options, this system seems to be involved consistently in those. So we, we have a system in the brain, at least that's what the research, research suggests, that is able to perform these kinds of decisions across many different choice domains and allowing us to make these kinds of complex comparisons that require a common valuation scale. This, was, um, this is called the common currency theory, and it was originally suggested by um, Reed Montague and Greg Burns in a paper in Neuron in 2002.